This is the question asked in today's skill rack daily challenge. So we are given three lines of input. In the first line we have the starting time of the factory and in the second line we have the closing time of the factory and in the third line we are given an integer x as input. So now our task is to write a program to the alarm so that every x minutes we will be making the alarm to ring. So we have to print the particular time whenever the alarm has to ring. So the starting time is 9.15 and x is equal to 60. So after 60 minutes the time will be 10.15. So the alarm should ring at 10.15. So we have to print that time 10.15 in our output. So in our output first we can see that I am printing 10.15. And then 60 minutes from 10.15 is 11.15. So I am printing 11.15 and then 12.15. 13, 14, 15, 16 and 17. So after every 60 minutes the alarm should be ringing and we are printing all those time and the last alarm will ring at 17.15 because after 17.30 the factory will close. So that is why we are stopping printing the time after 17.15 itself. So this is how we should be printing our output. So we are given the starting time and ending time. So from starting time we have to increment the time for every x minutes and print the time until it becomes greater than the ending time. So this is the function named print alarm timings. So for our example first let us assume a time. So I will take the time as 10.32. So here we can see that every time will be represented using only 5 characters. So, so the first two characters are hover and then the third character will be a colon and the next two characters will be representing the minutes. So first let us convert this minutes into an integer and store it into two different integer variables. So I am creating two integer variables named start mm and end mm. So start mm means we will be storing the minutes of the start time. So our time is in character array format. So we can make use of the atai function to convert it into an integer. So here we can see that inside the atai function I am giving ampersand start time 3. So what happens is all the characters from index 3 till end will be considered as a separate character array. And the characters in this range is nothing but the minutes. So this 3 and 2. So this 3 and 2 will now be considered as a separate character array. And when this is converted into an integer it becomes 32. So this 32 will now be stored into start mm. So now we have extracted the minutes as integer from start time. Similarly we have to extract the minutes from ending time and store it into end mm. So again we have to make use of the same logic. So inside the atai function we have to give ampersand but the character array is from end time. So we have to store all the characters from end time from the index 3. So that will be the minutes of ending time. So now we have extracted the minutes from both starting time and ending time. So now we don't need this. So what we are going to do is we are going to set the second character as null because we don't need this colon also. So when we set the second character as null the colon and after that all the characters will also be deleted. So here I am setting start time at the index 2 is equal to null and end time at index 2 is equal to null. So all the characters from colon will be deleted. So the remaining characters in the character array represent only the hovers. So we are creating another two integer variables start hh and end hh and we are going to store the integer value of the start time and end time. So inside the atai function I am giving start time and end time. So now we have extracted the hours and minutes as integers from both the start time and end time which were given in a character array as input. So now we have our hours and minutes in integers so that it will be easy for us to proceed. So now I am creating two more integer variables start time in minutes and end time in minutes. So the start time in minutes so we are going to assume the time format completely as a minute. So the start time in minutes will be nothing but the start hour into 60 plus the start minutes. So this will be the complete representation of the time in minutes format. And then similarly for ending time end hh into 60 plus end mm. So now we have both the starting time and ending time in minutes format. So now we can easily 
add the starting time with x in every iteration and we can print the time in hhmm format so now we are going to actually implement our logic so first we have to increment the start time with x because if the factory is going to open at 9.15, we need not ring the alarm at 9.15. We have to start only from 10.15. So that is why first I am incrementing the start time with x. And then I am going to create a loop. So this while loop iterates until the start time in minutes becomes greater than the end time in minutes. So the condition should be start time less than or equal to end time in minutes. And in every iteration, we will be incrementing the start time with x. So in every iteration of this loop, we have to increment the start time in minutes with x and also we have to print the time. So to print the time, I have created another function named print in time format. So in the arguments, I am passing the current value of start time in minutes. So in every iteration of this loop, we will be printing the, we will be converting the minutes into hhmm format. So that will be the required time. So here I am defining the function named print in time format. So in the arguments, I'm accepting the integer time and then the hours will be nothing but time by 60. So I'm storing HH is equal to time by 60. So now we have to remove the HH hours from the time. So again, time will be equal to time minus HH into 60. So the remaining minutes, so the remaining value will be nothing but the remaining minutes. So I'm setting MM is equal to time. So now we know the value of HH and MM. So using a printf statement, we have to print our output in the required time format. So using a printf statement and percentage 0 to D, percentage 0 to D, I am printing HH and MM. So we are using the percentage 0 to D because if we are going to print our time as 4, we should be printing it as 0, 4. So whenever we are going to use this percentage 0 to D, what happens is if the integer which you are going to print is less than two digits, it will add a zero in the beginning. If the integer which you are going to print is of two digits, it won't do any changes. So that is the use of this percentage 0 2D. So this is the logic to solve today's daily challenge. Thank you for watching.